Hey everyone, this is Eric Sleuth over at NDPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how you are able to enable uh, the RabbitMQ management interface and also uh, how to uh, how to connect Free Realize Orchestrator to the RabbitMQ broker running within the Free Realize Automation Appliance. First of all, let's uh, get a quick start. So what I have here is a training kit. It's used when I deliver the orchestration and extensibility training course. And um, so I have a free realize automation host, VRA admin, and the password is VMware. And when I log on to this host, I can see a few blueprints in my catalog. And when I kick off one of those blueprints, then uh, the machine is deployed. I also uh, configured some subscriptions and those subscriptions can be used to uh, yeah, to kick off Free Realize Orchestrator workflows. So when I go to by the des descriptions right here, the subscriptions right here, there is uh, one subscription I've created as a, as a sort of a test and you can select the event topic, which is virtual machine provisioning, and also the conditions. And in this case, the condition of the life cycle state must be that the machine is uh, 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 is, a, is I think it's building or something. I don't know exactly. And it's in the preface. So when all these conditions are met then while the machine is deployed by free realize automation uh, there's also a workflow kicked off so uh, yeah let's start uh, the orchestrated client and let's see if it actually works so uh, this is the built-in orchestrator client right here allow and then the orchestrator client software is connecting to my orchestrator host, which is located within the vRealize Automation appliance. And after providing a username and a password, I'm able to log on to this orchestrator instance. So this is the normal way how communication between vRealize Automation and orchestrator works by using the subscriptions in uh, in the event center and then um, yeah this way you are able to uh, to catch all those uh, to trap all those different life cycle states so what i want to show you is that um, in the library right here we have a special section And I have to, uh, yeah, there is a VMware section right here. So there are a lot of example workflows, uh, but this workflow is important because it's in my workflows and this workflow is kicked off when uh, a machine is deployed. So uh, when I jump back to my catalog, and I request the tiny Linux VM and I just click submit then the workflow in orchestrator eventually will show up here and show that uh, the new machine is uh, is deployed and by playing around with uh, with uh, the settings regarding the custom properties or hidden properties you are able to see uh, that you can pass properties from uh, the deployment of a VM to an orchestrator script. And this way you can communicate between orchestrator and free realize automation. What's mo far more important is that the whole uh, event-based subscriptions are these days not based on the stubs anymore, but they are based on RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ is a is a messaging broker and it's part of Free Realize Automation. And what we will do in this training video is that I'm going to show you how to enable RabbitMQ and how to uh, yeah, use RabbitMQ to, uh, to make a connection to your environment. So that's pretty cool. This is the 
Newest in, newest uh, add-on. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is you have to put the into your vRealize Automation appliance. So the vRealize Automation appliance is right here, and we are going to put the into this appliance. And I've prepared some commands. Uh, the commands are on my uh, desktop right here. And we have to enable the RabbitMQ management uh, plugin. And the software is already available on the appliance. The only thing we have to do is enable the uh, software. Okay, that was a wrong, wrong link. Okay, let's go to Putty again. <coughs> yeah. So the first step is that I'm going to do a RabbitMQ dash plugins enable RabbitMQ management. I'm using this because the normal config file is owned by the root account and cannot be accessed by the RabbitMQ itself. So I'm using this umask to make sure that I'm able to write to the RabbitMQ config file. It's a little bug, but don't matter. It, this is a fix. So now we have plugins enabled. So the web machine, the web dispatch, the management agent, the RabbitMQ management, all those plugins are started on the vRealize automation appliance. The next step I have to do is add a user. So the default user for RabbitMQ is guest. The password is also guest. But I think when VMware was building this appliance, they changed the password for guest. So I'm not, ab I'm not able to log on as a guest. So I'm creating a user eSleuth with capital V, capital M, and then VMware one explanation mark. And this user uh, already was pre-created, so I'm creating it again. Uh, but the user already existed. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to set the permissions of this newly created user. And I'm doing it on the root server, the root virtual message broker. And I'm getting read, write, and all the access. So I'm getting full access to the, the, the default root message broker. So after configuring these settings within the management appliance, there is a new web page available. And this new web page is pretty interesting because this web page is hosted on the appliance, eSleuth. Uh, and there it is. So uh, I can log on with my user account, eSleuth. The password is VMware one explanation mark. And now I'm on the RabbitMQ management interface hosted on the appliance port 15672. And this allows me to see what's happening within the event broker of vRealize Automation. So I can see my connections. I can see that there are some connections running. I also am able to see all the channels and I can see uh, the exchanges. And this is interesting because this is comparable to all the different trapping events that you can also select within free realize automation. But you can also add your exchanges. I can see the queues interesting because we will need this later to subscribe to one of those queues and what we see here is the VMware core catalog request submitted for instance this one is going to be used by us and um, I can do some admin stuff like uh, giving myself access to uh, the virtual root host and this is the guest account with no access and this is the actual user which is configured on the VAMI appliance. And this is the user that is used by VRealize Automation itself to, to connect to, to the RabbitMQ message broker. When I go to overview, there's also, uh, you can also download all the broker definitions. And this file is a JSON file, and it contains all the definitions that are created within this uh, VRealize uh Automation, the RabbitMQ message broker. It's interesting stuff. You can see performance, you can see the amount of events that are pushed. And uh, yeah, this is RabbitMQ. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is that we are going to subscribe to 
uh, a cue uh, and we will do it with orchestrator so we're not using the regular way anymore this is the newest one I was waiting for and uh, we are now going to do it in a different way because maybe you have other software or you don't want to use orchestrator and in this library we have an AMQP section right here and within the configuration I can add a broker so if I want to add a broker then I have to provide the name for the broker and the name for the broker is this fully qualified domain name so this is the name for my Rabbit and Q message broker it's the fully qualified domain name of my vRealize automation appliance so this will be the name for my broker local uh, it's also the host name uh, the next thing we have to do is provide the host name we can leave the port default the virtual host is slash is the root we don't use SSL the username is eSleuth and the password is VMware one explanation mark when I submit this everything should go well and now I can see that I've successfully registered a broker you can also remove a broker uh, you can remove a subscription and now we are going to subscribe to a queue let's start this workflow because I want to know when uh, a queue is triggered so the name for this queue and now we have to jump back to the page we were before the name for this queue when we go to queues we can pick a queue right here let's go to the VMware section and let's go to the service catalog request completed yes or let's do the request submitted request submitted yes and we need this queue name in order to subscribe to it so let's copy this one and let's go back to orchestrator this is the name for my queue okay next we are selecting the broker and the broker was already configured and it's the uh, it is the broker running on the free realize automation appliance next now I have to select the queue and I'm adding a new value insert value accept and now I'm submitting this and I'm subscribing to this queue if everything goes well then the bottom is green and everything is okay cool let's go to the examples so there are some examples right here and I want to wait for a message so I'm running this workflow and I have to select a broker so the broker we already pre-configured it's right here select and I also have to select the queue submit and now I'm waiting for a message so it's constantly waiting in this loop until a message has been received so when we jump back to the catalog and I'm requesting this tiny Linux VM and oh yeah this was the, the property I, you can add some properties here if you want to so this was the property I uh, configured earlier no another test one two three it's also showing in the log files but that's not important I'm submitting this request I'm clicking OK and now the request is submitted so when we jump back to orchestrator we can see that the TA Dunes the Dunes was the original company that invented orchestrator now we can see that there was a trigger right here so this gives you an alternate way to catch events and subscribe to, to those events without using orchestrator because there are a lot of uh, yeah libraries for instance for dotnet or even for power cli or powershell that can also subscribe to those brokers and events so you're not specially bound to orchestrator so it can be interesting if you want to connect if you realize automation to an external rabbit and uh, listening device okay so this was the end of the video i hope you have some fun with this really cool find eric sloof is signing off have fun